Welcome everyone to Politically High Tech. This is going to be episode 199. Yes, I'm getting close to 200. I'm as shocked as you are, believe me. I thought by 105 I was done. No, actually people want the more. I was shocked. It's okay. I'm going to have to upgrade it though, because I don't like doing the same thing. I like to just keep on climbing. Just picture a mountain with steps. That's how I want this podcast to grow. Keep going high, 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 high until... I reach a peak and then, well, if it's going to decline, I want it to, de to decline gracefully. Um, so I have a guest here and trust me, it's not the first time I have an attorney. This one here has more of an entertainment flair, okay? Legally entertaining, okay? Why are they entertaining? I'm going to break that down to just a little bit before he introduces himself. I'm just going to list us a few hats here just real quick, and then I'm going to let him graciously elaborate who he is. And I'm, trust me, I'm not going to bother pronouncing his last name. If you would have bet against me, pronounce his last name correct, you will get a nice income. But I'm not going to do that. And I'm a little too savvy. And yes, I'm going to take the coward's way out because I'm savvy. Say what you want. I really don't care. All right, so he is not just an attorney. He's an actor, even a voice actor as well, and he's a producer behind the scenes. So, yeah, he wears many hats. He wears many hats. And I'm going to have my guest here named Robert. All I'm going to say is the very long name starts with an S. Go ahead, introduce yourself. What do you want the viewers and the listeners to know about you? I, uh, I'm Rob Sigampeglia. Um, that's how you say my long last name. <laughs> um, as you mentioned, I'm an attorney. Uh, actor, voice actor, and a producer. I produced uh, about 35 films to date. Acted in many, many films with uh, uh, some some big, pretty big names, which is cool. Um, had a Super Bowl commercial back in 2012. So, uh, and it, it usually is featured on the CBS Best of Super Bowl commercials. It was on again this year, it's called Chevy Happy Grad. So I'm pleased about that for sure. Um, I wrote a book called voiceover legal and that's how i'm known through the voiceover industry people seek me out for legal advice as voiceover artists and actors so it's funny because i'm known as the i'm known as the attorney in the acting circles and i'm known as the actor in the legal circles so um and that that's about that's uh, me in a nutshell so i uh i do many different things and and i try to uh always expand myself my learning um my knowledge here i am i don't be minus brag we got some <laughs> with cred in the house come on yeah All right. I got commercial and i got a <clears throat> that's one of the few super bowl ones that i actually distinctly remember when i dig to my vault of old good memories i was like oh yeah and when I see his face, I say, he looks familiar. I can't put a finger on it. So I saw some more Oh, crap. I'm so <laughs> actor. Boom. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's pretty cool because it, uh, you know, like I said, it was on this uh, this year, also on the greatest commercials for, from CBS. And it was right before my favorite Super Bowl commercial, the Mean Joe Green Coca Cola one. It was on right before that. So it's pretty cool to think that I'm, I'm in that kind of company. You know, because it's it's a, it's a spot that, like you said, it, it's it's uh, people remember it, and uh, it, it it keeps living on, which is it, it's you know it's an historic spot, which is great. I mean, that's so it's not just uh, it's not just any Super Bowl spot; it's one that uh, that's that lives on and on and on, and, and it's uh, it, it, it it's it's humbling actually. <laughs> so it's hard it's hard to brag about it. It's humbling. So oh no 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 we welcome bragging in here we bragging. <laughs> This is me being a hypocrite Christian, you know. Normally, I sin. We're like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. This is this is not this is not empty bragging. Empty bragging is another story. So, oh, I'm the best thing. Yet you produce none of this is fine. Okay, in your head you are, but let's see what's the side of it. Is you got legit legacy status, and that is prime time for ads. Nothing gets bigger than that. Yeah, so, you know that is the Grammy of advertisement essentially. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I, that's, well, that's why it's humbling because when you think about it, how many celebrities want to be in Super Bowl commercials and haven't, and how many people have been in a Super Bowl commercial that that's 
historic, you know, that, that lives on and on. So it, you know, that, that's what I was saying. It's that's, that's where I'm talking about where it, it's, 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 it's humbling. I can brag a little bit about it, but it's, it's, you know, it's something that, you know, even I can't believe that it's something that, that uh, happened for real. So, yeah, there's even a little commercial series on that. I remember, I remember, yeah, back then. Oh, goodness, I can't believe I'm aging myself. Oh, the aging millennial, they might as well just call me. Hmm. I'm just going back in time and say, oh, my goodness. And I remember, and I just remember there was even a series on it that the story progressed a little bit. I don't see commercials do that as much like they used to, maybe except right. mutual. That's the only recent example that comes to me. But, you know, I mean, to me, those are more the heydays of advertisements. I sometimes, well, well, me, I'm pretty impatient. At times, some commercials used to bore me and, and, and just annoy me because ah, oh, something really good is happening. Nope. <laughs> Cut. And then someone's like, oh, okay, all right, okay, this is great. And someone was laughable, but now someone is just irrelevant, dumb, even if I'm going to be honest. But not this one. And, you know, the, these are humorous. This has legendary status. And only time will tell if. That continues. Of course, I want to be in the side of that legacy continues. And, you know, you don't have to be an A-list celebrity to have legacy status. So there you go. Thanks. Man. Yeah, I mean, 12 years is pretty long. So that, that's yeah. all I've lived so far. So. Yeah, this is, this is 2024 during the recording. So, hey, yeah. Oof. Oh, oh, yeah, time was very different back then. Jesus. Yeah, and I know what you mean about the story. Like, it, the, it's a that commercial is definitely tells a, st- a story in 30 seconds or 60 seconds and there's not many commercials out there that that actually tell a story in 30 or 60 seconds some of them do like some of the liberty mutual commercials i i the ones that are on now i, I like they're, they they tell a story they're funny so yeah and, and a lot of them are you know well even back then a lot of them were pretty forgettable right um let's just be let's just be very honest it's like, oh that is not that's who cares that advertisement they make money you know they right they're not gonna care about my opinion we could live without each other okay and it's not <laughs> and it's not a mean thing it's just saying it like it is i know sometimes it sounds hurtful and we need to get back to society where we could just say uh, opinions and disagree without you know Acting very tribalistic. Acting like, oh, okay, Robert's the enemy because he disagrees with me. He's hurting my feelings. <laughs> That's a different opinion. We have to drop that. We have to drop that crap. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't know why people get. I mean, if 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 I choose to disagree with you, it doesn't mean I don't like you personally. I don't understand why people take it personally right off the bat. It's it's just like, okay, I have a different opinion than you. That isn't that the point of America, like. <laughs> Because in China and Russia, if you have a different opinion, you go to jail or you get killed. Mm-hmm. Right? Right? I mean, why would we take advantage of the freedom that we have here to be able to disagree with somebody where it doesn't lead to a, you know, a fight? It's, you know, it's it's insane, if you ask me. It's insane. Oh, I absolutely agree. It, it, it is um, insane. And this is not, for all you political junkies out here this is not a left wing and a right wing thing this is a foundation of america let's remove the the red pill blue pill purple pill I, i'm over purple you know that listeners and, and the viewers you know i don't discuss by everybody's politics but we need to just appreciate that and i need to spread that message more often look, right if that you know there was there a lower point than this yeah, just look at the Civil War. Ooh, some of those fights got physical and a couple of politicians got killed over the issue of slavery. Documented right. true. You can Google it. I'm not going to sound like an obnoxious left not say, but you could just Google that and you know I'm saying it's actually truthful. Mm-hmm. So do we want to go back to that? Obviously not, unless you're a psychopath that loves chaos. <laughs> Um, but um, yeah, just don't admit that in the comments unless you're trolling me. I'm gonna assume you're trolling me if you could admit that, okay? <laughs> well, I mean, one of the things that that's uh, kind of scary today. Well, a couple of things are scary. First of all, universities, it's the same kind of thing. The, you know, if you if you raise an opposing viewpoint, <laughs> it, it causes alarms, right? You know, like if you have the uh, a, a left or right wing club, uh, you know, a liberal club or a a conservative club and they they try to ban it right <laughs> instead of 
talking about it and you know that's what it's about debating and talking and learning that's and then now they're trying to ban things from universities that's insane to me number one like that defeats the whole point of having a university or going to college <laughs> number one the other thing that that that's kind of crazy these days is we really don't have anything we don't have a huge issue like slavery out there that we're going to be having a civil war about we're just going to be fighting about ideology if there's going to be a civil war it's, it's crazy <laughs> i mean slavery was something that the battle lines were drawn on and it should be because it's a very serious issue we don't have any serious issues like slavery these days you know we have just really ideological conflicts that are going on that we really should just not be fighting over we should just be <laughs> like you said to start this segment out hey you disagree with me great let's I, I we don't need to agree on everything that that's that's why we live in america we don't we can we can walk around and not uh, agree with everyone's opinion and still be fine so <laughs> I'm going to quote Ed Koch here, former mayor of, of course, my city, New York City, the rotting opera, I call it right now. Cause it's <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. The truckers. Oh, yeah. That's that's going to cause a lot of problems. Democrats, look, I understand that you want to care for everyone. But at the same time, we can't be excluding certain group people, especially those who provide essential services. Come together. Debate your differences. You come from different points, different points, different areas of life. Of course, you're going to disagree on some things. You're going to see things differently. Someone who was born in the urban area is going to see things very differently than someone who lives in a rural area. Of course. You know, or even, you know, gender, racial differences to some extent. You know, but this is why a dialogue, exchange, even debate is very, very fundamental for functioning democracies and republics if we don't got that forget it right i mean you can see uh, yeah, china russia again i'm just pulling out for robert's examples because those are the key ones and these are the ones that even a normal ignorant person if i'm gonna say nicely you could grasp on if i say something like um somalia I was like, what, the heck, what the heck is somalia i yep. could obscure examples to show you how great i am in history but i'm not gonna do that <laughs> I'm bore you to death with that. Even though it'll fill my ego, you know, I'll feel good, but I'm trying to be nice here, okay? And we need to just appreciate these things. I actually didn't mean for this to turn to a whole reminder of my <laughs> fundamental reasons why America is a great nation. I, you know, it's, is, and you know what? It's even okay to criticize America as well for its. Because America's not perfect, and it never will be. No nation will ever be perfect, okay? Of course not. You know, it's impossible. Yeah, no, perfection is impossible, especially you live in this weird organic body in this place called Earth, okay? You know, I don't want to get all Christian. Look, I'm, you already know I'm a Christian, and I'm not ashamed of it. But as long as you're here, you just do the best you can. That's it. Just live your best life possible. Right. And if you don't have, you can't, if you can't hear people's opinions from different walks of life, how are you going to learn about it? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and people can express their views from their, from their upbringing and their background and their culture and educate us, you know, and educate other people. So, th I mean, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of free speech, I think, is so that, you know, it's not just, we're not just all doing the same exact thing and looking at things the exact same way. You know, you, you're, you're enlightened by other, other people that, that you're, you're living around. So, like there shouldn't be that should be encouraged and not discouraged like it is these days it's discouraged like don't say that stuff you know it's it, it to me it's it's just insane like there's there's nothing wrong with information in my opinion oh no it's just how you use it is more of a exactly exactly if you start bringing if you start taking information and then doing bad actions with them then it becomes a problem but if you're you know, if you're taking information and be constructive with it, making things better. Try to at least try to make things better, and that's that's the whole point. You know, rather than you want to construct instead of destruct. <laughs> so, no, no, yeah, exactly. I just I really hope you just getting this, listeners, because we are going to head to another civil war if this thing keeps up. I'm and I am not just trying to be an alarmist. Um, look. I am not going to get into politics. We already got enough with this legally 
and and what I was gonna say, you know, legally high tech issue that we will talk about. All right, but, but this needs to be reminded, and I don't care if I taint this tech segment with a little bit of history, because look, it's part of the podcast as well, and I'm gonna taint a little bit of of Christian or even other philosophy. Every once in a while, I'm gonna quote a Hindi or Buddhist quotes and connect it to the Bible because there are a lot of similarities in the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Some things are different fundamentally, but uh, man, once you get to once you study other cult, other cultures, even other religions, there are some fundamental similarities. Okay, like Hindu, we use karma in the Bible. That's called you reap what you sow. Same thing, different wording. That's one great example. And of course, you know the whole wheel of alignment if you do bad it comes back to you kind of thing so mm-hmm. all you know you're seeing the same things just with different words sometimes and we can't just treat like oh who the heck is you <laughs> we are the enemy the hell a robber because he's a white man we can't discriminate white people either yes i've even seen that as a multiracial person just because a person is white, I know it's controversial to say, it doesn't mean they're demonic by nature. And that's the same <laughs> thing applies to all the other races. As exactly. Well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't uh, matter what race blacks, it is. The, you know, the, the Chinese, Indian, Latinos, everybody. Okay. doesn't matter. You, you know, you're judged. You should be judged by your character. Yeah. Right. Oh, who said that? Come on. You know who that is, listeners. I'm just going to give you the initials. Cheat jump drum roll, please, because I refuse to pay for one. <laughs> MLK? Okay, don't participate with me. Don't don't expose your ignorance. That's fine. I just <laughs> give you the initials right there. You fill it up from there, listeners. Okay. All right. All right. Um th- that was very unintentional, by the way, but it's needed. It's needed. And yeah, and sometimes I could prepare just an outline. It doesn't mean it's gonna go according to plan. <laughs> Well, it's something that needed to be needs to be said. I mean, it's and it does concern the law. It that you know the Constitution is behind everything that we were talking about. You know, freedom of religion, freedom of speech. That's that's the basis of our country. People don't want people are throwing that away. People are chucking that, and that's the part that gets me upset. All the things that our forefathers built, people like Martin Luther King advocated for. <laughs> <laughs> just getting tossed in the garbage. No, we don't need it. You know, people are saying we don't need it, but it, it's very much necessary, and it, it's very much something that we all should be defending. And I'm getting the feeling that even the courts and judges these days are not upholding the Constitution, which they take the oath. That's you take the oath as an attorney or a judge to uphold the Constitution, <laughs> and that's disheartening and very maddening to me too. So. Oh, I absolutely agree. Yeah, a lot of people don't point that out unless you know, unless they get the the, the verdict that they don't like, and that's why the critics are sometimes discredited by the others. Says, "Oh, you're just criticized because you don't like the verdict." No, look, politicians, attorneys, judges, their duty is to defend the Constitution, not add their own little flair, their personal opinion, or even their rationale to it. But there's some rulings that are doing that. This is right. give you a specific example because I am just somewhat trying to protect Robert from the unnecessary idiocy of you people call trolls or just or just m- malicious people. I look if you want to be you want to be evil, you talk to your stupid echo chamber with your radically insane beliefs are quite frankly anti-American. I'm gonna say this is not about left, right, Democrat versus Republican. This is just in the fundamental american issue at the end of the day so let's just drop the crap because you know oh hello there doggy there you go another another <laughs> there you go, a, a second guess right there i was dog's name is gonna probably remain a mystery probably do, <laughs> do, maybe a soundbite i'm gonna start using just woof, pretend i have a dog there you go <laughs> all right let's get to what is this case here <laughs> TikTok case. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. So I represented um, Beverly Standing, who was the original voice of TikTok. Only problem was she didn't get permission <laughs> to be the original voice of TikTok. <laughs> so TikTok ended up um, with her sound files and they attained it legally, but 
they obtained them basically without her permission because what she had done was she had recorded a job for China <laughs> a few years before. Uh, well, that was supposedly for China, but uh, it ended up the people that recorded the that job were selling her files for AI. So that's how TikTok ended up with her files, and that's they put them. You know, they they put her up as the voice of the text to speech for TikTok. Um, so she came to me, and we sued TikTok in federal court in New York, Southern District. And um, they took they took her voice off and um, resolved the case. And you know it was it turned out okay in the end. But uh, you know that that sparked a whole a whole, a whole AI revolution of you know people getting scared about their being their voice ending up in places where they don't want it to be. Um, you know, and that's carried on obviously till today because AI is, has gotten a lot more prevalent now. Um, and it's actually, you know, it's turned into all kinds of scams and frauds, and, you know, people calling on the phone and using AI to, to pose as your son or daughter and asking for, for ransom money and, you know, things like that. And actually, they, thank God, the uh, federal government just passed a, a law that made that has made that illegal. So um, that's at least we got some advancement in, in the law to protect uh, innocent people from being defrauded from ai so oh this is a very rare moment for me cheering for the federal government um, <laughs> they, they do more to regulate um ai they need i mean this is one of the few times i actually praise uh the eu you know sometimes sometimes like the eu's i mean i have a love-hate relationship with eu let me just be very clear mm -hmm. well, the ai thing is the one that i gotta praise them for trying to become the trailblazers when it comes to legislation on ai yes Ali, this country we do a bunch of hearings in Congress, and most of the time, nothing happens. It's just right. the media circus. Okay, okay, it's longer trending. Who cares? We're moving on to the next scene. Well, I think the catalyst was when uh, the commercial for uh, for Biden came out for the one of the campaigns. I forget where it was. I think it was. Uh, I think it was New Hampshire. Actually, there was a you know fake <laughs> commercial that came out that was at a spoof. Of Biden, and I think that's that was the catalyst to get that passed because you know obviously the politicians don't want to be deep faked, and that was one of the things that the bill covered, and it also covered any kind of fraud, any kind of fraudulent activity that and made that illegal. So you know any kind of those scams or any any anything like that um, became criminal, and there's civil penalties as well. So you know yeah you're right about that because they always have to take. It always has to affect someone very, very important just for legislation to move real quick. Right. Um, unfortunately, with um, Bev standing, I'm sure it took some time and some <clears> fighting. <throat> and I'm happy that the that the New York, Southern New York district. Oh, I rarely use that term because I already talk about the law stuff as much. I should talk, I should talk about more often because it's just as important as the crazy politics that's going on. So you can know what's legal, what's not legal, what has an enforcement mechanism, which ones doesn't. Let's be clear, just because laws pass doesn't mean it's going to be enforced. Sure, there could probably be five laws I'm violating, but since there's no enforcement mechanism, I don't know about breaking them. Right. So, well, they're, they are usually, if so, in order to get around that issue, is that they usually, if it's a federal law, they'll put an agency in charge of it. And I believe the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, is now in charge of enforcing. So, if they don't put an agency in charge, then you're right. Nothing's going to happen, but they need, you know, they need to, they need to think about the enforcement part of it when they, when they pass, they pass laws and get to, you know, if they give it to an agency to create regulations around it and to enforce it, then it'll have some teeth. So that's what they did. I'm pretty sure it's the FTC that's enforcing this. Yeah, that, that sounds <clears> about right. Yeah. Even, even though I should be studying this more in depth, but yeah. No, nah, yes, honestly, yeah, they deal with the the internet, and all that other electronic emerging technologies space. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I don't think there's any other agency for that. No, I mean, you're not not gonna have like what? Well, no, well, I can't use CIA, FBI because I know they, they use that stuff as well. Bad. Well, of course, of course, they're they're the ultimate. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they don't, they're the cops. They, so yeah, they're the ultimate. Yeah, they 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 need to know this. <laughs> It'll probably be like I don't know. The EPA, you know, it's ridiculous <laughs> trying to enforce that. You know, they, you know, they they came in, 
enforce environmental rules for Christ's sake. Right. Exactly. You can't, you can't expect them to do that. It'll be as ridiculous as the day. That's a better agency I could bash in terms of AI and all of that. Yeah. So, all right. What about, let's see. I know you have a book before I, yeah, you know, let's talk about the book, um, Voice Over Legal, which mm-hmm. I'll touch on that. Um, what makes that book different? What or what, what do you want the reader to get? What's the take what you want the reader to, um, get once they read this book? So the way that that book came about, I'll give you a little background so that it'll answer the question. Um, when voice actors found out I was a lawyer, they would ask me questions. You know, they'd ask me about, you know, should I set up an LLC for my business? Um, you know, uh, can I get sued? Um, you know, can I put this on my demo or not? Is, you know, is this going to be an issue? So what I did was I started writing all those questions down. And each one of those questions became a chapter in the book. So, you know, what? How do I file my taxes? That was another another one <laughs> that I'd get. So each cha- each chapter is a question that I answer, and I I try to use um, case studies, you know, real real life examples. Um, and the voiceover industry was very receptive to the book, but it also applies to any a- any artist or any actor, also. Um, it, it's it's really a book for artists to learn about the law. Um, so because it was uh, people were so receptive of it, it, it became a uh, number one bestseller on Amazon for the entertainment law category. So um, it's still bought today. I'm actually halfway through the second edition of it, and AI is going to be one of the things that goes in goes in there. Um, and, but we'll talk a little bit about the union too, the union agreement in the book which we can talk here if we want to as well but oh, go right ahead because <laughs> this is all connecting to me to me i already see obviously just, just feel free don't don't restrict yourself yeah so i mean because the sag strike sag after strike against the film and tv producers that was really about ai that was the whole that was really the sticking point for the strike it probably would have been resolved earlier had it not been for the ai issue the other issue was streaming royalty rates because Netflix and Hulu were saying that they don't make a profit. They don't make a profit. So they don't want to pay. They don't want to pay actors residuals like they paid for broadcast. So that was the other issue, but that was a money issue. Those are always, that's always part of a strike is money and wages. So that wasn't really too much out of the ordinary, but the AI was out of the ordinary. And what happened? And actually I'm in SAG. Some of my friends is it happened to them, and which caused the issue. So my they had worked on a TV series. They called in to do background work, and the first day that they went on to the series to do the work, um, they were got all these pictures, like three hundred sixty degree pictures of them. They got you know put them in a van, take all these pictures, and then they were told. Okay, you don't have to come back now. We're gonna we're gonna use those pictures for, and we're gonna generate your image for AI for the rest of the series. <laughs> so, SAG found out about that, and they said, "No, this is not gonna happen." So that was what went into the strike. You know what was gonna happen with AI? You know because obviously that's a threat to actors' income and livelihood if they could just take your picture once and then use your image in a whole bunch of future productions. So th- w- what they did with the strike, surprisingly enough, it didn't ban AI. What it said was, if you do a project, the production company can use your image AI for that one project, but you can't use it for future projects. So if there's, if you have to sign or back, you have to sign a release um, or the family, if they pass and, it can be revoked at any point and they have to be compensated. So they have to negotiate compensation for, for future uses of your image if it's generated by AI. So that was basically what the, what the resolution of the strike was. The only caveat with that, the only, the only part of it that is disturbing. Well, it's a little disturbing that, you know, the union's allowing AI, but the other part of it is that if it's generative, generative AI, so if they use your voice or your image 
to create another character because they combine it with other voices or other people and they come up with a new image or a new voice that the producers are allowed to do that they don't have to pay the actor so they're allowed to come up with whole new characters by combining a, a bunch of sag actors uh, and that, that they don't have to that's it's fine under the contract and they don't have to they don't have to pay now i don't know how good the technology is yet for generative ai um i don't i don't know if, how easy it is to combine a whole bunch of actors faces to come up with a whole new character um but i'm sure you know the technology is that it's going to get there if it's not there already at some point so that that's it's a little disturbing um although you wouldn't really know that your image or your voice is being used because you're not gonna be able to tell because if you can tell the contract does say that the actor has to be paid so if it resembles an actor or resembles their voice they still have to be paid um, the other thing that's pretty cool is if say they hire you for background and they they give you a line through ai that you never said then they upgrade you so you get you get paid residuals for that part just like you know, just like you're on set if you're alive so that that i think that's that was that's pretty cool you can be upgraded <laughs> just by by ai you don't get paid for 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 not doing the work so <laughs> So th that's what the strike was about. And, you know, I want to talk about that in my book. So that's something I'm working on right now. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, this is something they need to take to consideration, listeners and viewers. An average actor, voice acting, even TV acting, don't get paid as much as someone like Scarlett Johansson, <laughs> Lemuel L. Jackson. No, because a lot of people just think, oh, they're actors. They can make a lot of money. Who gives a damn? Yeah, no, so the like stat is 95% of people that are in SAG make less than 5,000 a year. 95% top the five top 5% 5 make lots of money, but the 95% make less than five grand. Disturbing ain't it the truth. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's that's what it's that, that's what it's like. Yeah, you know, the actors definitely don't make they're not all actors are definitely not rich and famous as you know people think that it is and it's not as glamorous as people think it is either so um, you still want to pursue it by all means go ahead i'm gonna tell you to stop <laughs> oh i mean it's it's it can be fun for sure um it really just depends on someone's expectations if you if someone's going into it expecting to be rich and famous they're going to be very disappointed <laughs> or get discouraged you know to become rich and famous it takes a lot of a lot of hard hard work like it, it's it is the hardest job you can do on the face of the planet. <laughs> much harder for me learning acting than it was being learning to be a lawyer. It was much harder. So if you're willing to put the work in and it's something that you're you're that you enjoy, it's a passion, then you're going to be fine because you're you'll you're just enjoying acting. And that that's me. Like um, I don't. It doesn't really matter if I'm practicing law. If I'm acting, if I'm doing voiceovers, so I'm producing, it's all stuff that I love to do. So it's, it's fine. That's the, I, I don't, uh, I'm not, I don't complain about it. <laughs> so, and I'm not worried about being rich and famous. You know, maybe I got a little teeny piece of fame with the, the Super Bowl commercial, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, it's nothing that I'm concerned about. So if you have that attitude, you'll be fine. So what's the main takeaway? Make sure you love doing it. The fame and the glory and all that, all that's not your main intent. Just like you said, you're gonna be severely disappointed. Just to put it lightly. Okay. Uh me, I don't I don't really care for acting. Thank goodness. I probably most acting probably do just probably have a big studio for either podcasts or probably some talk event. That's the most acting I'm gonna do, okay? Which is very limited, but you know what? I'm happy with that. You know, maybe maybe a little cheap comedy here and there. That's the most acting I'm gonna do for <laughs> Anything beyond that, uh, go to somebody else. Okay, I know what I like to do. I know what I can do. And I'm getting to a point where I just cannot be all for everybody. You know, that just can't be all things for everybody. And you got to you gotta accept that reality. You have your strengths. You got your weaknesses. You got you to gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be real with yourself. You have to be real with yourself. Yeah, you have to. You have to really know yourself mm -hmm. because i see people that get get into acting for the wrong reasons one 
is that they're pursuing fame and fortune. And that's that's their main motivator. But another is they're they're looking for some kind of attention. You know, they're looking for a spotlight to be put on them and they're, you know, they're just looking for people to acknowledge them. And that's another that's a very dangerous reason to go into go into acting. Because acting is a it's a very it's a very tough business rejection wise. So this is why I think a lot of actors uh, drink and take drugs because that they're fighting that demon of the rejection and they, you know, they're not, they don't have the, they don't have the um, self-esteem possibly, or, you know, they, they don't have the, they're a little insecure and they, they don't, they can't deal with those things. So I did acting well because I love it, but I also, I also wanted to, help my at my attorney skills because you know i was always really shy so i wanted to see if the acting would help me break that which which it did um while i'm doing it now i'm not as shy i'm still shy you can't really change your personality but when i'm doing the acting and when i'm lawyering i can i can not think about being shy i can just go out and do it so it is kind of therapeutic in a way um and it really does make you look deep down inside of you and deal with all your inner demons and be able to be comfortable in your own skin. So that's something that acting, it's kind of, it's, it's like therapy almost, you know, it's, it's, you really have to know yourself and then you can deal with all those rejections and it's not a big deal. I mean, it's just part of the, it's really just part of the business, you know, like we were talking about earlier, earlier, you know, it, it, when people have disagreements, <laughs> okay great we have a disagreement but it's you know kind of the same thing when you're being rejected it's just a normal part of the business it's not something personal <laughs> it's, it's it's not because you're not good it's because you're not the right for the part and you know that that's you know what when you get over that hump it's it becomes it's healthy for you because then you realize there's a lot of other things that you realize a lot of other things fall in place and then it's not all just about being in the spotlight and being about me and being about ego. So, yeah, absolutely. I think to take a step further regarding the actors and actresses dealing with their demons. Yeah, I think even some of them even fall into depression or even get suicidal. And sadly, some of them have successfully committed that because I think one big part is also I don't hear a lot of have a social support a circle. Right. That's exactly. Like, you know, and that's why that the, these and these are themes I've heard over and over and over again. Robin, it's very true. Favorite actors, great example of that. Very comedic, top talent, but he was facing those demons, and sadly, he committed suicide. I don't think he had a strong social circle. I mean, he had a lot of fans, but do fans? Let's be real. Does do most of these fans know you personally? No, no. they only know. Yeah. As an actor, you're just a serve. You're just an entertainment tool to them. I know it's harsh saying that. Right. The most most famous actors have very few close friends. No. Yeah. From what I've seen in my experience, and the other thing too is to to, to to be a top actor, you have to train yourself to get down to those depths and that depressing. You know, if you're playing one of those roles where you're, you know, it's a it's a very emotional role. You have to you have to train yourself to get down there down in that depressive dumps and then sometimes some actors have a you know they may have had a really bad past so they start reliving that and then they can't get themselves out of it and that's when they they start you know they, they self-medicate and that's you know that's when bad things happen and like you said they don't have the they don't have the social support network to help them pull themselves out of that I, i've gone I, I every time i do a project every time i am a lead or a supporting role for a hefty role, you know, not not the easy ones where I play a lawyer, <laughs> but you know, ones that are I'm playing an emotional dad or uh, you know something like that. Every time I'm done with that part, when the shoot is over, I go through the the, the blues, the post shoot blues, because it's like you know you're, you're you you put all your energy into it to this character, and then it's over. You're you're not it's done. Job's done. You're not, never gonna do that again. You're never going to be with those people that are on set with you again. Um, you know, maybe a couple of them, 
but you're not going to, it's not, you're not going to have, you know, it's like when you go to a stadium and watch a game, you're never going to get all those people back in the, in the stadium again. It's impossible. So it's kind of the same thing. So you really, for me, like I, I go through that blues for, you know, for a few days, but I'm lucky enough that I've, I've been married for 35 years. I've got kids, you know, I, I could, I, I could get myself out of it. I, I don't, it's not, I don't need to start drinking and taking drugs to get myself out of those things. So, but I can see, I can, when I went on there, I can see why if I, if I was an alcoholic, I would start to, I would just start to drink. You know what I mean? I could, I could I'd totally understand it. So I, you know, what? even though I've been through that, but of course not with whole lights and cameras and stuff. If these people are really great to work with, you cannot replicate that experience. Right. The camera crew, the director, the producer, the fellow actors, and the makeup artists, and the light, you know, the light operators. Whatever. Correct me here. This is not right. my piece. Uh, well, then, and then you as the character, you're somebody, yeah. you're not, you're not yourself. You're playing someone else. So. How would you like being that somebody else? It's like, oh. Right. <laughs> you have to get yourself to that point. Or you're, you're somebody else. It's still you, of course, but you know the, those traits that you're playing, and so you're studying so hard before before you act. Like once you act, you just in, you're into it. You're totally into it, and that's the thing. Like you immerse yourself, and then coming out of that, that's where you get that boom. Man, <laughs> it hits you over the head. Oh man, the, you know that I got there, and it was you know it was great, and I, I felt great. And now I got to leave it and leaving all those, all these great people. And on the next one, if I get one, <laughs> so. All right. And even getting the next um gig, it's not even guaranteed. Right. Yeah. If I get the next one, you're right. Yeah. All those things hit you at one time. Absolutely. And I'm going to say this again, and I'm going to refer back to another episode that I've said this again. I think this needs, this needs repeating fail forward. No, what works turn your failure into a lesson don't take it as if uh the director hates me you're probably a triangle piece but he's looking for a circle right not the right fit in other words well don't take it personally that yeah. that's that's one of the four agreements you should read that book the four agreements one of them is don't take anything personally it's it's very important in acting don't take anything personally because if you do you're you're you even if you're taking things personally while you're acting you got the part you're on you're on you're doing the the gig and someone gives you an adjustment and you take it personally you're you're it's not going to be the same you're, you're gonna you're gonna internalize it and you're gonna you're really gonna fail at that point so then you have to deal with failure so you know acting is also dealing with failure a lot of it you know you're you're always and it's always it's a good thing it's not a bad thing like if, so if i'm trying to there's no actor that can play every single part it's impossible so but you can try to expand your range so that you can do more parts but really what you have to do you can't you have to do that on you have to do that in a, a, a class and setting right because you have to allow yourself to fail and you have to you know you're, you're in a safe space if you try to do that on set if you're trying to experiment with something new on set it could blow up and be very bad. So, you know, you, you don't want that type of failure. That could be devastating type of failure, you know, the, but you have to fail to, to be, to expand your range as an actor. You have to, there's no other way to learn an acting. You can't read it in a book. <laughs> you have to do it. So sometimes it just doesn't come out the way that you think it's going to come out. And that's not a problem. It's fine. You know, that that's how, like you said, you fail forward. You learn. You learn from that, so, and then you just go, keep doing it, and then eventually it hits. You know, eventually you get the breakthrough, as they call it. You know, and then and everything falls into place. So remember, it's okay if you don't get it right the first time. It, look, Absalom, he was very experienced in acting, so take what he says to heart. And that goes for anything, really. Yeah. The reason I like one of the reasons I like acting is because it, it 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 mirrors life. <laughs> it mirrors your everything that you happens in acting happens in in life so you know like you you could easily lose a case i lose, lose cases every once in a while <laughs> in, in in law you know and no one wants to lose but it happens so you just have to learn from it 
and take on to the next case. You know, you learn the cases that are going to be strong. You learn the cases that are not going to be strong. You know, you learn fact patterns. You learn what the law is and, you know, how you learn how juries perceive things. You know, that's all things that you, you, you again, stuff you can't read from the book in law school, stuff you have to just, you have to do it. So, and there's really nothing you can learn from a book in life. You have to experience it and that you have, that's why it's not a, it's not bad to fail every once in a while, right? What, how you react to the failure, that's the important thing. So if you fail and quit and start drinking and give up, you're, that's, you're going to be in trouble. You know, you're, you're, but if you're, if you fail and fine, you may take two, three days, a week, a month, whatever, take break, you know, and, but then you get back on the horse and you, you try it again. That that's, that's the healthy reaction to failure. So, or you just realize, Hey, this is something I can't, I, I don't think I can keep, I'm capable of doing. And then, you know, just move on to something else, you know, cause some people like, you know, I also coach, I've been coaching baseball and softball for basically my entire life. I've been playing ball. I still play. Um, some people just aren't athletic and they want to play baseball or softball, but they just, they, you know, they don't have any high coordination. They just don't have it. It's just something that God didn't give them. So there's no shame in going to do something else because you, you know, you, you're not capable of doing, of, of hitting a ball. There's no shame in it at all. You know, everyone has something that they're talented at. Some God gave some a talent to everybody. So your job in life is to find the talent that you were given. That's your job. That is exactly right. You know, um, well, this is what I have learned in the early age. Um, I sucked at art. Okay. I was a good colorer. Don't ask me to draw something. A five-year-old could beat me in a drawing company. <laughs> me too. And guess what? I'm okay with it. I'm right. okay with it. I could just make fun of ha ha ha. You know, it doesn't it doesn't bother me at all. It's just, I, you know, when it comes to fighting, defending myself, I find I'm actually pretty good at that. Even though I am not considered athletic. Oh, but get the ring with me. I'm just gonna look at you and regard. After it's a freaking. Like I said, there's no shame in that. That's fine. You know, but you know, only self defense people don't 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 just go out there and start fights too. Don't think like you know, <laughs> try to like um. Oh, I'm forgetting this actor's name. Yeah, don't try to emulate the actor from row house or something just starting to feed up everything and i'm not i'm not advocating for that at all just you know when you push a corner well the other thing about films is they're fake <laughs> so keep that in mind what you see on the screen was all it's all fake so don't be emulating that for real for real life because it's not it's not real <laughs> so you know. Yeah, just because, yeah, just because I said there's a, oh, oh, no, Elias is advocating fighting is a, no, 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 excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, that's not what I'm saying at all, I'm saying an absolute last resort self-defense, that's it, right, and don't even try to copy, this is one I have a clear example of, ramble okay oh you're just gonna be a vigilante, you're gonna have a bunch of murders and all of that, oh, you're gonna be the hot topic for the media for months, Okay, yep. and look, and I don't want to pay attention to the same crazy nut who tries to copy John Ramble or the Batman even and do all this vigilante stuff. I am not advocating for that at all. Okay, just nope. be absolutely clear. And remember, films are fake. And tell your brain that too, because if you let your brain get free range... It's going to get you to copy that because there's been studies shown that the brain in a subconscious level cannot tell the difference between reality and fantasy. That's why you need your conscious to be stronger. So like, that's fake. <laughs> yeah, people always say, oh, they do it in the movies. The movies are fake. There was a sound guy there and there was a light guy there and there was actors there. <laughs> and they after where they yelled cut, they went and started being real again and you know, they went to crafty after after they killed cut it's fake it's not real so i always laugh when i hear that someone's like oh they did it in so and so movie yeah they did <laughs> that's a movie it's fake yeah, try to copy avatar with all the cgi graphics good luck with that <laughs> yeah definitely definitely oh my goodness Nothing. actually what you were you were talking about self-defense so my kids all took karate and they were we all got to the black belt and their teacher told them, if you ever, if I ever hear you using karate in school, you'll be, you'll be in timeout. 
and you'll be like running laps in in, uh, in karate. Like, you know, that was the rule. You couldn't use karate in school. So even for self-defense, he, he didn't want them using karate in school. So, yep. so again, absolute last resort. You have to try everything else. You have to try even 10 failed te- uh, techniques, tactics, what have you. I know it's frustrating. Look, I could empathize with you because I am not the most patient person in the world. If like three fails, I will I will start throwing a fit. I like to resort to that as well. But look, just think about the consequences. You always gotta think about the consequences. That's the only thing that gets me back. Right. Just think about the consequences. Is it worth it? Most of the time, the answer, the simple answer, if you thought about it honestly, would be no. N O. Right. Yeah. There's usually heavy consequences. So there's a consequence to every action has a reaction. There's a consequence to every action. So you have to think about what's gonna you know what is gonna be the result of my action. Oh. And it's a good way to keep yourself in check, right? That's what keeps me in check. Even when I'm about to get impatient, about to lose out. <laughs> that's been like that, that second to last lever of before I just really lose it. <laughs> I mean, everyone has a temper out. Yeah. Everyone gets mad. So I do too, but I try to take my temper out on inanimate objects. <laughs> there you go. That's one way. And um, I like that you mentioned the four agreements because I've read that <clears throat> even the, and I even got to read the, the fifth agreement. Yep. I read the fifth agreement because I really love that. That's very, it's not biblical at all. But, you know, if you're tired of me using my Christian hand, let's use the four agreements. Okay. It's a very, very good one by Don Miguel Ruiz. Okay. Yep. I trust me, he doesn't know I'm promoting him. I don't know him personally. <laughs> I really think it's a good book. It actually has helped me personally and professionally. Because before when things didn't go my way, I would be livid. Especially when I know I did everything right. So why the hell is not going? Why is this happening? Why is this outcome happening? Then no, then a lot of times when people react, they're reacting to their own life. And like whatever they're going through most of the time. Most people, this is going to sound wrong, but it's true. A lot of people tend to be self-centered. They're pissed right. it happened to them. They just happen to take it out on you. Right. Reflection on them, not on you. That's why nine out of ten times it's very easy for me to dismiss the person that's angry, cursing me out. Nine out of ten times, very easy for me. Very easy. It's like, oh, okay, this person's having a bad day. <laughs> just don't, they don't take it personally. And you got it. You got it. Right? That's- I- I have tried to tell mm-hmm. certain people I know that, but it's not registering their their organic computer. I'm just say like that. I don't know yeah. else where I guess four agreements. Don't make assumptions. Yep. Be impeccable with your word. Yep. Don't take anything personally. Always do your best. Four agreements. If you live by those, you will. <laughs> I don't think anybody can can always live by those because i think it's one of those things that's ideal and it's impossible but you can strive for those for those things so and then the little fifth agreement self-mastery is when in doubt just listen that's the fifth one um yes you know that's if you want to geek out and try to impress me that that you know yourself but yeah i'm just feeding my ego a little bit there and like, <laughs> I, I, like, i'm open i'm honest with it all right so wow, this got more philosophical spirit. Look, we already take some <laughs> politics. So all right, this is this is definitely fitting. This is hitting my secret checklist here, which I should strive to aim more often if I'm gonna be honest with myself. So let's see what we got here before okay. Well, I think these two questions are pretty simple for you. What is the current state um in well knocker frame is better? And entertainment. Is there any new laws that anyone should be aware of, especially those who like to follow on I don't know, actors or movies? If I'm gonna give a crappy example, even tabloids, if you will. Uh, what should people pay attention to um, in terms of uh, the current state of law regarding the entertainment industry? Uh well, I mean AI is the big thing right now. Artificial intelligence, you know, everyone's concerned about that. Um uh, <clears throat> The other thing that's not necessarily law, but that's really still going on is diversity in casting. So the, the uh, Hollywood and producers are really trying to expand their casting choices to different races, creeds, ethnicities, which is great. Um, 
you know, you, you saw a big shift, I'm sure, in the last couple of years, but they're trying to expand across, you know, because there's there's not as many, like, for instance, Asian groups or Latinos that are being cast. So they're trying to expand for, to have more inclusion than just African American, Caucasian, you know, women. They're trying to expand it more. So that that's the other trend that I see going on in the entertainment industry versus it's not really a law, but it's just a, a trend that, that I think is positive. Um, uh, the way I look at filmmaking, if you want it to be real, you need to reflect the world. So there's all kinds of different people that are running around in our world, all kinds of age groups, right? And if you just have, you know, 20 something male caucasian male and a 20 something caucasian female that's very not very diverse and that's not really that real so you know if you that's how i look at it you know the more diverse you can get in your casting the the more real that the end product's gonna be oh yeah no me i mean me the only thing i've criticized a little bit just one the execution of course open it to everybody is always a great thing i mean i would never debate that although that's really you know enforcing that exclusion you know, unless you want to make movies based on what? No, e- even 1950s minorities they don't exist. If you want to, mm-hmm. right? I, I think no. In general, that's a great thing. I would never argue for that. It's nice that we have more Latinos, more Asians, especially, and you know, it definitely doesn't hurt to add more blacks as well. Um, and definitely women, and and I think movies have to reflect on the culture, right? So I, that's why I personally think. Um, do I always have to like how it? how it's done no but i am not gonna boycott it or make a big deal i just simply <laughs> won't watch the thing that's it that's the thing i have to bash even some of the left wingers right wingers when it comes to things that don't i don't cater to your little echo chamber needs well just don't I, watch it don't watch it don't watch it exactly that's it and i agree i agree with you i don't like what i don't agree with is if you're Doing an historical piece, for instance, and you change the genders of the people or the genders or the race of the people that really that you're trying to portray. I don't agree with that. Because again, it's about realism for me. Like what is that's not real. <laughs> that's it's you know, you're you're trying to even though it is fake, the whole thing's fake and produced, you're still trying to make it look real. So I'm talking more of like the the modern, the modern film that's set in today's world um diversity you know, diversity and casting for that not not a historic piece or not a remake something like that i'm talking about something that you're coming up that's new that's fresh oh that that is well said yes yeah, so you are having a base conversation that means i'm not going to push a far left a far right nonsense saying oh, oh come on what's going on come on society I was, oh no 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 we gotta you know um abraham lincoln needs to be a uh, asian woman right. i'm not watching that unless it's a comedy if it's a comedy let me know it's a comedy you know this is not based on historical facts that's that's the story even though i'm, I'm still not gonna watch it because me personally as a historian i'm offended but i'm not gonna make a big i don't know post or rant about it i just simply don't watch it again yeah i mean there are some there are some parts where you can it's it, there, there's no set there's no set standard there's no set race there's no set um sex there's no set, you know you can you, you can make that character you can change it like because a lot of times in screenplays that's what you do like when you're when i'm producing something if there's a particular actor that i could get for the for a role i'll change the role <laughs> i'll change it so that it fits that that actor right so there are certain parts where you can do that but there are obviously there are parts you can't do that <laughs> you, you know if you're playing in the, the historic character you know like hitler if you're doing a film about hitler you know you, you everyone has that picture in mind and that's what the film has to be it, it's real so that's just an example but but you know. Yeah, no, Hitler is definitely not going to be no three foot Filipino who is just who's just wearing a sombrero Mexican hat. Okay, right. You know, you're not going to have that, and then also you take it off. It, it's a short Filipino woman. No, no, unless you're doing a parody, a comedy. Of course, anything is open, like I said. But if you're doing an accurate historical piece, oh no. I'm very meticulous with that, even more than with fictional characters. I mean, I have some standards for it, but they don't have to fulfill it. 
like I said, we could live well with each other. We'd be just fine. We, we, yeah, we, I think it's confusing too. Like it, it cha- if you're changing the, if you're changing the character, the historical character, then the the, the viewer, if, especially if they're young, you know, they may think that's how it was in history. You're changing history. That's what you're doing. So, I, I uh, that's another reason why I, I don't agree with it. Because there are places, like I said, there are definitely places that where diversity in casting is great and it should be used. But there are places where it doesn't fit either. The part is the part. So, oh yeah, that's like uh, what 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 what's a Latino film that got popular? They in the Heights. If you change that, just to have only black and white people, blame me, the Latino community be very very pissed, and that's based on you know it's not that historically accurate, but. Is trying to reflect on modern Latino culture and right. Washington Heights. So right. If done that. I don't blame the Latino community for being very upset. And, you know, they boycott your film and don't make a lot of money. Well, that's on you, you stupid <laughs> directors, producers only. And I, I don't feel bad. I, I really don't. Um, do I believe they should be canceled and punished? No. I, I mean, the most organic punishment is just don't watch the film. It, it bombs the box office. That's it. Right. I mean, it is art too. So that's the other side of it. But there, yeah. there, I art think there should be a, a line between art, art and history. Like you should have a hard line. I agree. As a historian, <laughs> I agree with you a thousand percent. I can't say it enough. I can't say it enough. You know, and what's another ridiculous example? That's like making Obama into a white woman. Oh, imagine outrage with that one. <laughs> Ooh, imagine outrage. Just imagine outrage. And, and rightfully so. Oh, this was supposed to be a historical aggregate piece of yellow white It's women. not historic. It's it's not this yeah. that's not what happened. It's not real. History. It's it is it, definitely revisionist history. It would have to be some kind of parody because it's not real. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I love giving these ridiculous examples. We were going for hours with this. <laughs> um, I mean, well, it, it, that's more recent history too people they remember that but i'm talking about like history that none of us lived through you know like the civil war if you're changing grant and lee <laughs> changing their gender and, and changing their their uh their race you know it's, it's people might think that that's what happened you know that that's it's not a it's not a real depiction so it's not it's not real and that's the bottom line it's not real yeah but okay george washington you're a brown horse now there you go. First president was a horse. <laughs> or you, you, you make him African American. I mean, I don't know. You know he, it's just, it's not the part. So it's not. It has nothing to reflect on the on the on the race. It's just it's George Washington. It's that's not. It wasn't wasn't his race. So it's just not the part. Period. It's very simple. There's nothing more to it than that. And let's do science fiction, multi universe, maybe, and then oh, we went to a different part of time. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're doing something artistic where it's not, it's not a historical reflection. It's different, you know. Right. Like if you maybe we're imagining that what would happen if George Washington was a, was a, you know African American. That's a different thing. It's not. It's it's not. Uh, it's not a historical piece. It's it's different. Oh yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And Harriet Tubman is two um Asian women somehow, you know, in a whole different universe. And yeah, it's, it's, you're trying to show maybe what what would happen if that happened. You know, maybe yeah. that's what the film's about, and that's great. That's fine, but it's not not if you're doing a piece on Harriet Tubman, like Harriet Tubman is Harriet Tubman. Period. <laughs> that oh, was yeah. the whole thing. The whole thing that kind of upsets me about the Aunt Jemima thing too. I don't know if, how far we're gonna go with this, but Aunt Jemima, they changed. You know, they. She's a real person. She was that was the way she was. That was her on the bottle. And they just took her off and they got rid of history from, you know, which is I think that's a shame. Because it's not like that was a character that was made up. That that everything on the bottle, the Aunt Jemima bottle, was real. Like it was her. She created that. She that was what she looked like. Why mess with that? I don't understand that. Uh. I think I understand it, but the answer is going to be very dark and depressing. Um, and not just that one. Um, definitely was an Uncle Ben gone. The Native American woman, Lano Lakes, gone. But it's funny. Uh, take away history. This is still there. Take well, away. It, well, it, Debbie, the, the, again, what's that blonde lazy? Little Debbie. Yeah, Little Debbie. There you go. I think she's still there. 
ironically so so much for diversity and yeah and that that's fake little debbie's not a real <laughs> not a real i don't think she's a real person if she was then it was based on a real person but yeah, no, Aunt Jemima is a real person so <laughs> you know what i mean she's an I, historical figure and she was a great woman very advanced like she you know what i mean very much advanced the african-american race <laughs> Right. She was a an entrepreneur. She, you know, did a lot of things that was uh, you look up to as as an American society. You know what I mean? So I, I don't understand. Like you take her off, that's that's disrespect, dishonor to her. And that that's my opinion. So I don't I don't know. The woke rationale, which I love to criticize. Oh, this is stereotyping. <laughs> No, oh, she broke barriers. No, oh, it's not stereotyping. If it was a character that someone created, if it was a filmmaker that made that character and put it on the model, yeah, I agree. That'd be stereotyping. But that that was her. That was actually historically her <laughs> on the model. <laughs> like a photo of her, basically. So I mean, I kind of say they did these cartoon exaggerated features that support that really shows that they, they stereotyping you know i'm gonna i feel like i'm gonna call out the looney tunes you know i like them but you know they did have racist elements especially back then they're talking mm-hmm. about 1930s 40s and 50s let's be absolutely clear okay I, I, you know i can understand if aunt Jemima had these elongated big bubbly lips with a large nose, you know, things like that and make it look hideous and stereotypical. That'll be a different story, you know, right. and large breasts and, and her back bumpers is, you know, it's so big that it's hard <laughs> to miss. You know, I'm going to say they, they use those exaggerated features just to support stereotype, but that's not the case. No. I want your mama. It kind of goes back to what you were saying way at the beginning of the of this show. Like, if it's kind of like I have a different opinion than you, and we we can we have to be able to go and <laughs> coexist with different opinions. Same thing in that it's it's it, that's a his, she's an historic figure. So taking it off the bottle, you take away the discussion of it, right? You take away the discussion of history and Aunt Jemima and talking about what she did and her mark on the world. You take it off the bottle. Who's no one talking about it anymore? Because you know, kids don't see that and say, "Who you know? Who is this person on this bottle?" Right? So you're taking it away. You're taking away the debate factor. The, the, the my opinion versus your opinion. You take it. You're taking it right out. And just throwing it into the garbage. I don't. I don't understand. Like that's not my America. I don't. I don't know. Uh, listen, I already gave the rationale, even though it doesn't make much sense, and I don't believe for not getting it because it doesn't make much sense if you boil down to the core. It's just yeah. I mean, and it and sadly that serum now blends it with the other serums because it doesn't stand out either. Right. What did oh, they call it? I, I, right. uh, like I, I, my wife bought something the other day and said, Dude, "Look, you know, I, I forgot what the name of it is." And I'm like, "What is that?" She's like, "This is what Andrew Bible was." I was like, "Are you, are you kidding me?" <laughs> it's it's just a generic maple syrup now. Yeah. I think it's called a Pearls Mills Company. Yeah, it's something so like generic. That. And the picture is just some colonial town. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. It doesn't know. doesn't get anyone upset. God forbid we get anyone upset. I don't care. You know, this is why I don't care. I when there's something so stupid and so horrendous, I I, I don't care. <laughs> you know, this is that that's just nonsense. Just just think about if I went into court and I was worried about getting people upset when I was arguing a case. How uh, what kind of effective lawyer would I be if I was going in worried about upsetting anybody? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Nope. You would have been out of that job. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't do my job if I was worried about upsetting people. It makes you got me started now. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, I'm gonna try this to lower the heat temperature because I'm about to get myself started as well. So the feeling is actually mutual. No worries, not towards each other. You know, it's not like me. Me, I'm just gonna pull a gun and just shoot through the screen and kill each other. Okay, That's, <laughs> you know, you want to talk about the Aaron Burr versus Alexander Ham- Hamilton duel? We're not doing that. <laughs> it's just what happened to a great, true historical icon. That's been really, I can't say any other way, canceled. Right. Okay. 
So. Canceling history along with the icon. You're canceling. And you're the historian. So that should really upset you. <laughs> I'm trying not to be upset, but I'm there. I am just there. And I am. Yeah. No, when I first saw that, it actually really pissed me off. It just, I actually threw my smartphone. Yeah. I really did. And I'm, it had a, well, it's a good thing I had a protector. Well, the protector cracked and <laughs> shockingly, shockingly, most of those, most of those, Smartphones still function well. I'm surprised by that. I thought it was gonna just break into two pieces. I was really, really pissed about that. And you, you know, oh, if Goya had a a Latino man and try to cancel him, I will be just as I'll be just as upset. As of course, curious. you know, yeah. Let's use the Goya, the more Latino example. Yeah, but thank goodness they don't have a character there not for a long time, so that's not gonna have an impact. So, all right. I want to. I, I hope. I hope that. So, I've been. I've been talking about. I actually been talking about some of my filmmaker friends about this, and I hope someone makes a documentary about Angel Mama because she deserves it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I'll watch it too. I like to know the release of that. I'll definitely want to watch that. If I have to donate money, I'll. You can count me in. Oh, nice. All in. right. Maybe I'll produce it. Yeah, you know, and especially when this thing hits gold and be bigger than what it is now then yeah i'll definitely donate more money because this needs to be done this is when you're talking about injustice that's injustice right there oh, oh it's just a picture well <laughs> you, you don't know history and you and i don't want to assume you're prejudiced because that's actually taking it down taking it down a notch and it's going to make things more chaotic than what it needs to be but you just don't know history i'm just going to assume that that you're just straight up ignorant and just careless. That's all. I don't want to be like the the, the far left people either. It's just all oh, your racist because you just because you just disagree with this. No, I'm not going to do that at all. <laughs> uh, but I'm but I am going to assume that you're just ignorant and careless and sometimes just quite stupid. That's all. That's only assumption based on that idiotic statement. Do the picture. Yeah. Well, let's keep taking more things down, and then we're going to go back to a very barbaric authoritarian society. And before you know it, um. Well, if that's the case, let's take every picture off of every bill, all the bills, all the cash. Take the pictures off if they don't mean anything. Why do they have pictures? On, uh, uh, you know, why are there why are there pictures on there? Take them off. Even the Abe, even the Abe Lincoln statue it has been defaced and taken. You know, even taken down in one instance because you know these these um, radical morons are just trying to erase history so we can forget. You know, sometimes we need these bad. Characters like Adolf Hitler, well, Robert E. Lee, he's only bad because he defended the Confederacy. Right. He's kind of against slavery, but he still signed with that. So, it, no, you don't throw away history. If anything, you put them at a museum. 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 All these bad, racist, controversial figures, even Margaret Sanger, who brought who brought on abortion. I won't that cancer, even, even though I think she's a horrible person. Museum. Dump yeah. The museum. That's well, even, even L.A. has a mass murderer museum. In Hollywood, <laughs> so right, yeah, <laughs> they have a museum of murder <laughs> or a museum of death in in Hollywood, where there's a bunch of mass murderers in there. They have you know a skip for Manson and a, a skip for the the, the, the guy that uh, the su- Mr. Suicide, the one who I forget the name of him, but he had the the cult where they all committed suicide, like a whole room. For, like, oh. I mean, if you get, if you got a museum like that, I mean. We could put history in museums. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, even though you'll be a, I'll call you a, a psychopath, but hey, there's a museum for you right there. If you want to be obsessed with murderers and people who cause massive death, go right ahead. It's your yeah. right, weirdo, but it's your right. <laughs> it's actually a fascinating museum. I've, I've been there. It's, uh, you know, they, they I probably they need have... to go once because I'm probably, I'm probably have a few screws that's been loose. <laughs> Because you know they talk about all the, it's it's a historic, it's history. I mean, if you like history, you like the, you like that uh, museum. So yeah, that's the only thing. That's the only string that I got with that. If it was that, if I didn't have any other string, I would not go. But yeah, it's just a historical connection, just like you said. Uh, yep, we talk about murder uh, museums. Yeah, well, I ain't gonna get much into that. Um, <laughs> hey. Movie. If you want to, you want to connect with him more. I'm just gonna give his social media links. 
So you connect with him about that. That's your reason to click on the social media. <laughs> right? And before I even do the shameless plug like I normally like to do, um, oh, this has been going on for a while, but great conversation, by the way. Definitely not, bo- not bored here. I'm not bored at all. <laughs> what projects are currently working on during entertainment or even attorney? Um, like I said, I'm writing, finishing my second edition of my book and i've got a couple of films um got a horror film called hillsborough road that's um almost done editing and uh, a film that i did with uh, kevin sorbo called another life that's almost done editing so those are my two most recent projects and i've got about three or four that are in development that i'll start working on in this uh, coming year so you don't sound that excited <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just, you know, it's, I'm doing like kind of routine. But... After Kevin Sobel, you know, come on, they're gonna throw some nostalgia in there. Yeah, actually, I I, I um, acted two scenes with him, so that that was fun. Like that was a lot of fun. Um, it's always fun when I I can act with uh, celebrities. Like it's it's good to watch them. Good to see their routines and and uh, you know I I really do observe and learn from them. Um, you know, it, it's uh, it's always a learning experience. Anytime I go on set, it's a learning experience. But when I get to act with um, celebrities in, in the scene, it's uh, it's it's another notch. So and yeah, no, that is awesome. You see, there you go. We gained some Hollywood adjacent um people, which is great for this podcast. <laughs> Something I never expected. If you would told me I would have talked to anyone in acting, whatever. I would say you are crazy. <laughs> Why well, I've been debunked? Well three times already um well one is a fitness one is a model and well you're the third you're, you're the third one and in my honest opinion the best one no matter out of the three you oh know, thanks I, i'm throwing shade i know i know i mean don't take it personally it's just <laughs> i don't take anything personal no no no, 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 no not you no, no, i want to i want to attack the ones that i think <laughs> personally just 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 just, 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 just uh, start trouble no but no no they're great for their own reasons but this one of me we connected in a couple of levels i already said yeah this is gonna be awesome all right enough for me yammering i'm sure i have tortured you listeners of viewers long enough and let's do the shameless plug-in you know i love to do that because i'm a proud capitalist i'm a proud 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 capitalist so, uh, it's like I said, I was alluding to the social media links earlier. He's in the big six. Yeah, the, it's the big six. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. I refuse to call it X. TikTok, which I refuse to use for now until they give me an easy million dollar opportunity. Yes, I, I can be a sellout. And, <laughs> yep. So, if I do anything treacherous one day, you'll know why. And don't worry, it's just a contract. I'm going to be obligated probably for a year. And then you can hate me all you want, but I warned you. Okay? I warned you. So, I already called myself out a few times at me being a sellout. So, is there anything else you want to add? Oh, and don't forget the most importantly. I can't believe I almost forgot this. His website for law. Okay? Especially if you're... A voice actor and actors, yeah, as long as you're involved in the entertainment industry, I believe, you know, you he is your attorney, okay? All right. So just yeah, just go there if especially if you're having legal troubles. He's he's been doing it for over three decades. So he's not a new kid on the block. <laughs> okay, thank you. Also, oh, I don't trust him. <laughs> well, then you're quite idiotic at this point. I can understand being skeptical. But there's a time where you have to drop it, especially when there's enough good news and confirmation that's put up there, okay? So he's already written books. He's already represented lots, lots of cases with 32 years of experience. I can't come up with a number. I was representing probably thousands, maybe even 10,000. Yep. Now, so look, he has a crap ton of experience. So I don't want to hear that doubt. You talk to him about that, you debunk your doubts, especially if you're in the entertainment um, industry. All right. And I already gave you the social media links. Go to Rob Skig Esquire. Yeah, that's a title for a lawyer. Okay. And I'm going to just spell that link out for you. That's R-O-B-S-C-I-G-E-S-Q dot C-O-N. Rob Skig Esk dot com. Okay. 
So go there. This might help you out, especially as regarding acting, voice acting. Hell, even if a light falls on your head and stays. Yep. He will help you out with that. Workers' cop, I do that. Yep. <laughs> exactly. You know, workers' cop is not a strange thing. It's is yeah, just about every industry um has that, except for the illegal ones. Um, so <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about that. Anything else you want to add before I wrap this up? No, I mean you said it all. I'd, I'd love to help anyone that uh, has legal qu- questions, or you know, if anyone wants to talk about acting, voiceovers, or producing films, TV shows, give me a call. Oh yeah, he does have job offerings. How can I forget? So <laughs> it's not just for law, also for jobs as well. J O B. So yeah, if you don't got legal troubles, yeah, go get piece of a job. You know the. The job market's not doing that bad, but if you want to pursue a different career, experiment. Give it a shot. Why not? You never know. <laughs> shockingly, which I'm going to just final short story. I took a voiceover exam and I shockingly passed with flying colors. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, I got time to be voice. I was just experimenting. I was just like, let me just see what I got. Do I got any creative juice? It turns out I do. And this is, you know, after three years of doing podcasts, I was like, oh, I, I passed? Really? Oh, okay. Just say I gotta um smile more. We'll just I said, how can you tell if it's just to the phone? This is just to the phone. I said, no, nah, it's not a superpower. I can just tell by the tone. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, that makes sense. I felt dumb asking that question. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but hey, you never know. You're gonna, you know, there's parts to you that's unknown. Find out. You can answer your what if. You won't have that. You won't have that regret. What if? What if? What if? What if? What if Fifty years later. So. Yeah, never have one if. Never. Always go after what you what you want to. If there's something you want to try, just do it. Yep. That's all I want to say about that. So let me do my usual wrap up. So if you enjoy this episode, give a like, share, subscribe, or follow. Subscribe for YouTube, follow for Rumble, and share this with someone who you think could benefit greatly. From this episode and if you're paying attention to this through i mean by paying attention you're listening to this through apple podcasts give a star rating hopefully it's a five and if not i'd like to know why to do a little comments and if uh spotify hope is a five-star review if not i totally get it you can't leave a review just yet i don't know when spotify is going to update that i do not work with spotify so you need to heckle them about that <laughs> Okay, they're primitive when it comes to the review system. So with this out of the way, have a blessed day, afternoon, or night.